Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Acorn. I'm Natalie. And we're here in Shawnee State Forest today. We're gonna be doing the Southern Backpacking Loop. Um, it's April 23rd right now and it's about 50 degrees out, but it should be getting up to about 86 today. So I'm going to be doing about 28 miles over the next day and a half, hoping to be done by noon tomorrow. It's currently Saturday. It's about seven o'clock this morning. So let's get going, let's hit the trail. I wanna keep it brief. We're gonna be doing bigger mileage day today, hoping to camp at camp six tonight. Um, maybe camp seven if camp six is full, but we'll see. And yeah, I'll tell you about a little bit more once we get going on the trail. So let's do it. So I wanted to give a little bit more detail about the trip, um, but I did want to go ahead and get started hiking to make sure I make my miles today. Uh, but like I said, I'm doing the South Loop, which I, I couldn't tell the exact mileage because of all the like connector trails um, to actually complete the loop, but it's somewhere between 28 and 29 miles. So today, I'm pretty sure I have the option of doing either like 19 and a half to 20 or around 25, depending on if I stay at Camp 6 or Camp 7. Um, camp 6 is supposed to be like the best campsite on the loop, so I'd imagine maybe it'll be crowded tonight. I don't know. Um, I'd like to stay there, but like, I truly I don't care too much about my campsite. I'm here more for the hiking part. So if I have to push on to Camp 7, then that's good. As long as I'm feeling good about the miles, then I don't mind. Um, a couple notes about this area. So I'm carrying a little bit of extra water. I'm carrying a little bit less than two liters. Usually I would carry like one um, because I've heard that you're not supposed to filter from the natural water sources here because of high metal content. I know that some people do it, but I'm gonna try not to. They do have pumps at all or most of the campsite. And most of them, I think except for Camp 6 actually, they fill, like the park staff will come and fill a reservoir. So it's not like coming from the water sources that could be risky. So I'm shooting for that today. And then I also wanted to mention, um, when I pulled in, it was a little bit confusing where to go, which lot was like the backpackers lot but they were having an event down there and I had to talk to the park rangers and they were so nice. They were very helpful, like very friendly. That was great. And then at the self registration system back in the parking lot, they had free maps in there. It was very straightforward, easy to use, easy to do. So yeah, that's, I think all updates I have right now. I am doing the loop clockwise though, the south loop. So let's keep pushing. And I will show you when we get to the actual part of the Shawnee backpacking loop where I connect to it. So. So I love all these little just like patches of 
little flowers popping up for spring. It's really just been a pretty trail so far. Just like, they're so cute and they're everywhere. They're just very colorful. The purple ones at least. Love it. doing a little roadwalk section to get from the connector trail to the Shawnee backpacking trail. You had to cross the, the creek over there. My feet got a little wet, but it felt kind of nice because the sun is getting higher and I can feel it starting to get warm, which I'm excited for. It snowed in Michigan this past week and I am so ready for spring. I hope I sweat a lot today. So I'll show you when I get to the, uh, the loop trail. So I just crossed the road right here. And according to my app, which I'm using all trails for this one, which I wouldn't usually, but I felt like the best one out of all the options. Um, this should be now the Shawnee backpacking trail. So it's really pretty out in this field. There are butterflies everywhere just everything is growing the sun is shining and it feels like spring and i'm excited for the rest of this loop so we have an orange blaze back here which means that we are indeed on the shawnee backpacking trail and i also wanted to mention a few things that i forgot before so this trail is considered to be the hardest backpacking trail in Ohio, which I don't know, doesn't really mean much to me because this is my first time backpacking in Ohio. And they also have nicknamed it the Little Smokies of Ohio. So I can already tell that um, this really isn't anything like the Smokies. I thought it was kind of a bold comparison to make the first time I read it. But I will say that it's been really beautiful so far. The trail, really well maintained, at least the connector trail. I can't speak for the Shawnee trail yet. And extremely well blazed. The signage is great. And I can tell there's a lot more tree diversity here than like most places I've been in Michigan, which I think is great. And there's just a lot of stuff to see. I've been kind of on the ridge some of the time and not really a view but you kind of can see through the trees. So, so far, this is a nice little area, but I'm gonna get probably water at the next camp because I don't want to mess around with my water on this trail. So I'm gonna do that and then probably maybe update you when I get there. Looks like we've got some raccoon tracks and my shadow is right in the way. Let's see if I can. I don't know if you can really see those. I'm actually going this away up the hill. Okay. Camp 4. 
four. Um, all trails have this labeled as Camp 3. <laughs> I was so confused when I was looking at it. Because I was like, I passed Camp 3 back at the road. This would be Camp 4. The sign over there said Camp 4. So it's just mislabeled. I should have known better than to use the all trails map. But I don't know. It seemed like the easiest option. Um, but anyway, let me show you the map here. There's a creek and I thought there would be like a water pump here but there was not so I did get from the creek I don't know if they still recommend not to filter from it or if that was like an old warning I've seen pretty much everyone I've passed filtering from the creek so I did it too because I needed water like there was no way around that so here's a look at the map um, this is the backpack trailhead where I started and then I took this, the blue one, and I did the connector trail um, and came down here. And this is where I crossed the road. That was camp three. And now I'm down here at camp four. So I have, it looks like 7.8 more miles to get to camp six. Oh, my mask's blowing away. Um, so 7.8 to get to camp six and it's 12 42 right now i um took my shoes and socks off because i don't want to get like blisters or anything so i'm trying to be good and take care of my feet on this trip so i'm gonna take a little break here try to eat as much food as i can stomach and then just try to hit the trail again i Still, I'm undecided if I'm going to go to Camp 6 or to Camp 7 tonight. So I either have like 7.8 or uh, what, that'd be like almost 13. So I could do either. I don't know. We'll see how crowded it is at Camp 6. Um, and then I know the best views are supposed to be between Camp 6 and Camp 7. So I don't want to like do that in the dark or anything. But it could be a nice like sunset hike or I could do it sunrise tomorrow. We'll see. And then I also know that the section between Camp 5 and Camp 6 is supposed to be really hard. So that's going to be like the end of my day. So we'll see how I feel after that and see how crowded it is at Camp 6. I just um, passed two guys, or they walked by. They were taking a break here and they were also headed that way. So they're probably going to Camp 6 too. So probably going to have neighbors, but I don't know. We'll see when we get there. So there was actually a water source here, like a pump. So I think I'm going to dump out what I just got. I mean, it's still like I filtered it, so some of it's going to be like in my clean water, but I think it'll be okay. But yeah, I'm going to go. There's a pump over there. I'm going to go and fill up. So I got my wish of wanting to sweat a lot on this trail. <laughs> it's very exposed up here on the ridge. And let me just say, this trail is very strenuous. At least some sections of it have been so far, just with the climbing. Um, there are like, at least so far, there've been some good little breaks in between the hard sections. But there's some very steep, pretty long climbs. Um, it's nothing technical, it's just like straight elevation gain. So I see why they say this is the hardest hike in Ohio. I think I probably am on board with that, but I would definitely say it's very strenuous. So make sure you're prepared if you come out here. I just really don't want to belly crawl right now, but you know what? There ain't no way I'm getting over that, and I also don't want to climb up there. So, here we go. I guess I'll take you guys with me. This might be some... Oh, it's muddy too? Oh my goodness. Somebody's about to get dirty. Oh, gross. Okay. 
Well, my knee's in the mud. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well. <sighs> Could've been worse, I guess. But like, yeah, got a little dirty. Oh well, we hiking. We're supposed to get a little dirty. So, I guess I missed camp five. See it. We were just climbing up, but now there's a sign that says this way to camp six. So I was a little confused when I like ended up on the bridal trail because I thought that was supposed to be after camp five. So I guess good that I did more miles than I thought, but also how in the world did I miss camp five? I'm so confused. <laughs> oh, well, keep pushing on to camp six. It's 351 right now. It's going to be a rough 3.4 miles, I guess. Although that last section, oh my goodness, was that a climb? So I hope that was part of the hard part of this section and I already got that out of the way. That'd be nice. I'm just gonna choose to believe that until the trail tells me otherwise. Look at how many tiger swallowtails there are. <laughs> so many. They're so pretty. Honestly, one of my favorite butterflies for sure, for sure. I've been seeing them just like all day. They've been like following me down the trail. Love to see it. Here's some interspecies mingling. Huh. That's so weird. The black one looks like it's shadow, but it's not. It's two butterflies, I promise. That's so weird. Like, I thought they did that when they were, like, mating or whatever. Huh. So I just stopped for a little break to uh, filter some water. And realized I meant to get water at Camp 5, so because I missed Camp 5, that means I didn't get water. So this is all I have left. So almost a liter. Um, so oops. Could be a big oops, depending on whether or not there's water at Camp 6. I think this will be, like, fine to get me to Camp 6. I know it's going to be strenuous, but um, I've already done part of the strenuous part. So I think I'll be okay in that department. It's just if there's not a water source there, then it's like five more miles to camp seven and I don't really see a water source on the map. Well, there may have been one like halfway between six and seven, but still I don't actually want to push on to camp seven tonight. I don't think um, that feels like a lot. So it's gonna be hard to cook and drink this water to get to camp and then have water for tonight. That's not gonna be enough. So I hope there's a water source at camp six. But anyway, let's keep trucking on. I also meant to go pee at camp five. I've had to pee for like several hours and there's not been a good spot because there was just like steep climbing after camp four. And then you were like along a creek the whole time and I wasn't gonna go next to a creek. So, and I'm definitely not gonna go on this bridal trail. <laughs> So I hope that when it starts to get steep again, there's a place to pee because I really wish I was man sometimes because they can just literally go anywhere. But anyway, enough ranting. Let's keep walking. So good news, everybody. There's a stream here and I am going to get, I think what I'll do is just get a liter of water and put it like carried in my dirty water and then if there is a pump or something at camp six then i will pour that out and use the pump but i'll go ahead and grab a liter of this so i have it so let's do that so i made it to camp six and i'm going to film this really quick before these guys come over here um there was no one else here you actually had to cross the creek it's right on a creek so there's plenty of water i did not see a pump so it's going to have to be creek water for tonight but I'm going to set up in this little small spot over here, but they have like stone chairs and there's also a privy back there. So I probably won't like talk too much to the camera for the rest of the night just to be courteous, but I might film my setup. So, yep, I made it.
so I'm cooking up some dinner now. We have some ramen. I brought a Noor meal, but I just didn't think I could stomach it tonight after just how hot it was and how much it was sweating and stuff. And then I also have the best tuna in sunflower oil. It's light tuna now because they changed the packaging, but it's still delicious. And then I put some electrolyte powder in here to replenish electrolytes because I sweated a lot today. And I'm going to eat, drink a lot, probably try to drink like at least a liter. Go check out the privy and then get more water and go filter another liter tonight so I don't have to do it in the morning. I like to do all my chores at night. I don't like to leave stuff for the morning. I'd like to hit the trail by 6 a.m. tomorrow, so that's the game plan. And yeah, I think my ramen's boiling, so I'm going to go eat that now. It's about 8.15 now, and I am in my tent. Um, I brought my zero degree bag just because it's my lightest one, and usually I sleep cold, but I got kind of sunburnt today, like the tops of my arms and my hands, and I think my face got sunburnt. So it might be a hot night, but I'll probably just drape the quilt over me and then, I don't know, stick my feet out. But I did want to mention um, before I go to sleep, that the section between camps five and six was not hard. Um, the climb out of camp five, that was a really big climb. That was probably the toughest one of the day. But then after that, you're like on the bridal trail for a while and then you're kind of just up and down a little bit, like small climbs, and then you just go down to the creek and you follow it. So I'm not quite sure, maybe I misread, um, because I would definitely say the trail between camps four and five was more strenuous so I don't know but I did want to mention that before I go to sleep so I'm planning to hit the trail at 6 a.m. tomorrow probably gonna set my alarm for like 5 or 5 15 and it'll be about 10 miles out to the car and I'm hoping to make it out by noon so that should give me plenty of time although I'm probably gonna be sore tomorrow so anyway I'm signing off for tonight and we'll see what we can see tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. It's now Sunday, April 24th, and it's just after 6.30 right now. I did hit the trail at 6.05, so pretty close to what I wanted. And um, the two guys who I thought were going to come over and camp at Camp 6 last night, they actually stayed across the creek. And then when I passed them this morning, they asked if I had any extra electrolyte powder, which I did because I brought a lot. And I think maybe they were having a little bit of a hard time. Um, I don't know if it was like dehydration issue or what, but like one of them I think was just having a real tough time. And then... Um, I think they're probably going to, like, hike out on the White Blaze Trail to the road. It's, like, a mile and a half or something. And then we exchange contact information, even though there's not really any service at the backpackers lot. Um, but I might end up going to pick them up from the road because it's not very far and driving them back. So I told them I was planning to make it back to camp. Oh, this is risky. I'm going to do a creek crossing. Um by around noon so now I do want to actually make sure I get back 
Um, not that I wasn't going to before, but I have extra reason to make it back to the car by then, just in case they need someone to pick them up because it's going to be another hot day again today. So that's all the updates I have for now. I just uh, want to push on as fast as I can. Hopefully we'll get some good views on this section. I'll show you. But that's all I have for today. It's going to be another hot one. You know, and I'm sure this probably looks like flat on the camera, <laughs> but it's so steep. But I was thinking, I do appreciate that here in Shawnee State Park, they don't really waste time with getting you to the top. They're just like, here, go up, get there. Don't need switchbacks. But I will say, hopefully that's the top because there's supposed to be some views on this section and it's going to be perfect time for sunrise. So let's hurry up and get up this. So there is a very nice sunrise over here. It's already getting pretty warm out, but I'm hoping I'm kind of getting to the views now. That over there is a nice view in itself. So, yeah. Maybe I'll film some more if there's something good. Hello, little rat snake. Are you trying to cool off? I mean, warm up. Look at this boy. <laughs> he looks like he's, like, kinked. That's so weird. I'm just going to step around you, buddy. Actually, I'm going to take your picture first. Hope that's okay. You're probably too cold to, like, move very fast right now. <laughs> oh. So it looks like now I am back on the Buckeye Trail and also the North Country Trail, which I totally didn't realize was in this area. I actually didn't know that the Buckeye Trail was in this area at first. Um, so that's really cool because the last time I was on the North Country Trail, I think was in the, the Manistee River Loop back in Michigan. So that's pretty neat just to be on like two bigger trails. So, I'm hoping maybe because they're like bigger trails, this will be a nice section. I don't know. It doesn't really mean anything, but yeah, pretty cool. So, here's the turnoff for Camp 7. Looks like they do have potable water at this one. Um, I'm actually just going to stop right here real quick and filter my other liter. And then it'll be 4.9... Oh, 4.4. Well, that says 4.4, but the map says 4.9 back to the car. So I'm just going to walk back and probably not take any breaks after I filter this water. So good deal. have to hike up this road just a little bit to get to the top parking lot because that's where Natalie parked so it's gonna be a hot little walk here on this road I ran out of water like I don't know 0.2 miles ago I'm thirsty Anywho, I'll show you when I get to the car we made it back to the car hello I'm so thirsty I'm so thirsty. I think I was supposed to actually have you pick me up down there. That's oh. where the trail dumped out at. Wow. It was hot on the road, man. The boys you rescued made it safe. They did. Mm -hmm. How did you know? Because they knocked on my window and said, are you waiting for someone named Acorn? So we are on the way back home to Michigan. And I just had a few couple last notes before we sign off for this video. Um, so I wanted to say, first of all, overall thoughts. It was very beautiful trail, and I can tell that the people, the park staff, and I don't know if it's Ohio DNR or who it is, whoever maintains the trails and the whole state forest area, they put a lot into it, and you can really tell by the way that it's maintained. Um, it's definitely very strenuous. Um, I know a lot of people use this trail as like a practice trail for the AT or other long hikes, and I'd say that it, it would be helpful. It'll definitely make you want to do a shakedown and lighten your gear for sure. So it's not a bad idea to go out here prior to that. And then I also wanted to say the mileage on like the map and the all trails app, 
Um, wasn't exactly accurate, I don't think, because it ended up being about 17 miles yesterday. And then today, instead of 10, it was more like 11. So I guess that did make it like a 28 mile loop, but it's just a little bit off for some of the mileage. So I wanted to mention that as well. But yeah, highly recommend it, especially this time of year. It was beautiful. There was tons of wildlife, just a lot of stuff to see. And yeah, that's all for now. Um, got a couple big hikes coming up. I'm gonna be heading back down south in June. So stay tuned for that video as well. Thanks for watching.